Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Welcome to Rick's Corner. The man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. Welcome to Rick's Corner. You guys have asked for Dave Half to come back, and it took me, what, almost a year to get you? I think longer than that. It's maybe been a couple of years. He is so busy. This man is so busy. Um, you do a lot of special effects with studios. I used to. Now I just collect and I kind of deal with private collectors and stuff. I don't really like to sell art anymore. I mean, I'll help friends out once in a while yeah. that have a project, but um, I mainly like to keep my own art and I like to sell. Well, when you collect, you collect what? Movie posters, magazines? I used to, yeah, a lot of that stuff. For some reason, a couple of years back, I got into old mortuary stuff. I don't know why. Maybe because of the old Dr. Frankenstein machines. Yeah. Old embalming machines. Yeah. Makeup kits. Uh, you show me like these, that. and they're only not like in a, in a case like perfect. There's a museum of this stuff. It's it's a it's a monster collection. I actually just bought three old 18th century funeral parlors out and cherry picked all their best stuff. So. Is there like an obsession with death? It's not. It's the old makeups and the, and all the old machinery and work and stuff. It's just beautiful. I mean, it's like it, it's stunning antiques that have never been touched. No, I know. And not. you never and no one ever really goes after it because anyone that goes for something like that, no one ever lives to tell about it. Right. You're on the table. You're dead by the time they work on it. <laughs> that stuff. You had made. You showed me a long time ago. You made a, 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 a Frankenstein and a creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh yeah, I did a, a guy named Mark Alfrey had sculpted a beautiful creature, so I painted it rainbow yeah. colors and yeah. taxidermist timber wolf eyes in it, and uh, I love that stuff. This is detailed stuff that he had made. I remember you had a head in your car you made one day with the eyes were all glistening, and it, it looked like you were driving around with a monster in the car. Remember that? You pull up the gym sitting on the passenger side? There's stuff all over the place. And this is what he makes. I went to your house once when you are up in Northridge, and you had fingers and hands in the... In the uh, it was in the toaster oven. Right. You were making them in there and then going to paint them. You're right, cleaning out the, uh, or drying out the material. This is in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse now, nothing's changed. No, nothing's changed. Um, so when I first met you, you were training at the gym and, and you were a little bit heavier. Like a lot heavier. Yeah. Your arms were huge. Yeah. Biggest triceps I've ever seen. Everybody always talks about Dave Half's triceps. They're enormous. How big were your arms at that time? Do you remember? Maybe 23. Yeah, it looks like it, I think yeah. so. And what I saw you do for triceps, I do now. You know how you take the curl pad and you push against it? Right, isometrics. I get the best pump out of that than anything I ever tried. Right. I finish off with it. Well, if you combine that with the weights, you're pushing the blood in. Exactly. And you can do sets of 10 sets of 50 of that, and it really burns. It really burns. It's the same thing. It's, it's, it's resistance no matter how you look at it. Right. Either with the weight or with your body. The more repetition is better. Yeah. And I do shorter stuff now. I'm not really... You know, the old theory was, well, if you don't do a full extension, then if the muscle forms, you won't be able to straighten your arm. And really, it's, you know, at our age, or if you're yeah. going to walk around for 80, 90, hopefully 100 years, and you take a straw and you keep bending it back like that, something's going to give. Sure. If you do break. too much on the joints. So if you do half a thing this way, and then the other one this way, you're not doing full motion. And I don't do any kind of weight on top of me anymore, any gravity stuff that pushes down on the spine. Yeah. I'll lean over with preacher curls. I'll do chin-ups, pull-ups, dips. Nothing where anything's on my shoulders pushing me down like like gravity heavy, no, no heavy squat no no nothing no, even I, standing with any weight yeah. anything you're pushing down because once the pads give in between the joints you're finished you know that makes a lot of sense because your vertebrae goes up and down you have these little pads in there and over time they they shrink down and then you yeah. have spinal problems and you have pinched nerves right and who knows if they ever come up with something I mean I have stuff that I could work in and put in between people but they're not going to let me do surgery on stuff I mean <laughs> if they come up with some stuff with cushion stuff that'll work later on they can replace that that's not not really too successful though, exactly right now so once you ruin those pads or, you want to do stuff where it doesn't put you in the ground but it enhances your life exactly you know that's so but when you started you went heavy what do you mean when you started working out you first started no, I, I, I eased up to it. I mean, I really, it was just over time. I mean, I struggled for a year with 225 on the bench yeah, but with another get, guy to get four or five reps with it. But what would you get up to? Uh, 
Uh, the most I ever hit actually was 615, and yeah. no no steroids, no chemicals or anything, but this is years and years of hitting it where you get kind of used to it. Yeah, I've never known you to take anything other than no, uh, never, milk. Nothing, nothing. I mean, I don't even drink anymore. I drink water. Yeah. I play tennis with the kid. I don't even drink soda anymore. So, But, you know, it just takes time with anything. But, I mean, if, you, if you're careful with it and you do 10 sets of 10 and you don't push yourself and you gradually move up, you're going to get stronger naturally. Of course, every time you work out. What was your body weight then? The most, uh, I actually when I hit that amount, I was about 195. Seriously? Yeah, I was never. I wasn't over 200 till I got older. When I got into the 40s and the system doesn't burn off the food anymore, then I gained the weight and I started getting like 230, 250, 260, and I'm like, oh my god, 267. <laughs> I remember that, and you'd come to me, and say, man, I gotta lose weight, but I can't stop drinking milk. Yeah, I'm like, uh, and it doesn't matter what you do with the exercise. No at all the weight will not burn off unless you cut the this food. is something very true i'm sure you guys have heard this before people say well you don't have to worry about what you eat you work out every day no that's not true no it doesn't matter it doesn't how hard burn you off work anymore. it does not burn off you've really got to watch what you're eating yeah. when i when i quit the sodas and i quit all the sodas and carbohydrates for about a year mm -hmm. and i was just so bloated and i thought you know what some i think my daughter was doing some home monster movie and i'm sitting in a chair and filmed me and somebody said don't wake the baby i mean it looked like i was pregnant i go god i feel terrible and i thought you know what i never tried to die in my life but i thought you know what i'm just not going to eat stuff that's going to put weight on I I said tomorrow I'll drink water I'll dr eat chicken fish salad and I did that for a year and within stop the sodas within 60 to 90 days I dropped 30 pounds I remember that quick I, remember. I mean and now it stayed off I play tennis all the uh, about five six days a week two yeah. hours at a time and I don't I don't drink sodas waters the vegetables you know I'll have the cake or the bread yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah, sure. once in a while sure but the tennis really helps you running around and the moving and stuff I'm it's, sure it does how many days a week are you working on the gym I go uh, about five days a week. I drop the child off at school, yeah. and I'm there at 7.30. I'll walk for an hour, and then I'll do some weights. Then I pick her up and play about two and a half hours tennis about five days a week. What are you doing uh, as far as the weights? What kind of a workout is it now? Curls, back arms, dips. You know, nothing too heavy anymore. Back arms, triceps. Yeah, triceps. Back arms, as an old turning back arms. I'll do the, the, the rope pull downs, and then I'll do the isometrics. I don't do the heavy stuff anymore. I used to lay down with... Uh, 315 suicide what they call suicide yeah. back arms like oh yeah, yeah yeah and uh but it was just so much on the elbows but and totally. the bones yeah it's gotta be hard on the joints well the muscles get stronger than the bones and the tendons so right. it's like too much engine for a car exactly my hands would go numb my elbows were killing me now i feel better do you um because a, a lot of things have changed over well as you get older for me especially i use a lot and actually i just saw arnold and frank are working out in the gym they're using machines for everything cables and machines do you find that a little bit better than using the weights anymore? Yeah, I don't mess with the free weights anymore. I mean, it's just loading on the weights and taking it off. Yeah. It was great at one time when you are younger, the big 45 pounds, but yeah. now all the machines they have, you could do the, you, you know, you lay down, do the incline, do the bench, uh, and then the free stuff, the chin-ups, pull-ups, preacher curls. You don't have to mess around with any of that. You're not going to drop anything and break your foot. Or, I used to love the old pig iron back in the day. We all did. All the old rusty stuff, and, you know, that was, that was the thing, but it's, you don't really need it. You don't need it. You know, they, the machines like the hammer and the side backs and all those machines today are engineered to work your body part just like the dumbbells did or the barbells. I mean, the press machine's the same, the incline's the same. Uh, if you figure in your mind, and I used to say, if you think in your mind you're doing the dumbbell workout, for example, you're doing the pushes with the dumbbells on the bar, but you're on a machine, you'll get the same effect as you do with that because your mind is telling your body what to do. Right. So your body follows what it's suggested to do and then you get your results. Same thing with cable curls. I did them today. The there's a handle of little balls in the end. I did cable curls with 50s. 60s, 70s, 80s. All right, 12 reps. Boy, my biceps pumped off that. Yeah, perfect. And so as long as I was there, well, I'll just do tricep pushdowns and supersets like old school. Right. Right? Then you come back fresh each time. You could you could do half the workout doing the curls and back arms. Yeah. Go. You can go one from the other and you don't get tired. You don't get tired. Because you're pushing the blood around. And then I did what you did. I go over to the preacher bench and I, I'm doing, it has a little curve handle for the cable and I'm doing curls on top of the bench. And then as minute I got down, I did the tricep pushes from there. Yeah. Superset. It yeah, worked great. It's perfect. It's perfect. Especially do you do ten sets of fifty or something and it burns like fire. Well, I didn't do fifty. You're, you're, you know, <laughs> but you get used to it like anything. Yeah, I know. Fifty is a, fifty is a lot. I mean, it's, I know you do get used to it, and it does work. You know, you don't have to do a long spurt. You do a short spurt with yeah. it. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, and right. it's, it's, uh My son did that the night before last. He told me he said I did the Arnold presses. Yeah, I did uh, three sets of fifty reps. He said my shoulders had never pumped like that in my life, and it was only like twenty pound weights. 
you know, maybe tens, twenties, but it worked. Back in the day, we would never use twenty pound weights. Right, it'd it's be like, embarrassing. The girls use that. Well, that's the thing is, you got to change. You know, you really got to change what you're doing in order to suit your life. You know, yeah. instead of the image with it, you want to do it where you feel good. That exactly that it keeps you good. I mean, I thought I'd never go in the gym and not warm up with three fifteen on the incline. Yeah. I go, this would be embarrassing. Yeah, and, and it really doesn't matter anymore. After I had the spine, I had spine surgery, and I'm like, I'm not going to mess around. You know, the pinching in the legs for about three years and stuff. And he went in and corrected and everything and drilled open the canals to the nerves and he said hey 18 months to let the bone heal let it heal up you got another 50 years on your spine yeah because it compresses the nerve right i have that right now in my fingers i have a compressed nerve in my neck which makes my hand go numb right and they have a new prolotherapy where they shoot solution in around the nerve and it takes away the tissue that creates pressure on the nerve and it just opens it up and lets it work again it's, it's, it's in place of surgery. And if they give you where you're no pain anymore, then work around it. That's what the whole trick is, to it be is able to adapt that. to whatever you're doing. It is that. Any, any suggestions or advice for these young guys today who are training hard like this? I mean, don't hurt yourself. If you hurt yourself or you do too much, it's going to cost you later on. Yeah. I mean, uh, and you're going to feel it later, and then then what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to do anything. So if you kind of take your time with it and ease into it, you're still going to get strong and healthy, but you want to do it where it's healthy, not where you're, you know, you don't have to outdo the person next to you or be the strongest or this or that. There's always stuff to... Remember Vince? Sure. Used to come in the gym. I, I knew him since we were a kid, and I, I look, he's got, I mean everything in the gym on the leg press and he's laying there with it and he's got both the knees wrapped up and I just walked over to him I said I got one question for you why exactly <laughs> and you know not only that you see them doing the reps and it's just like here's the leg press and here's a rep they're not even coming way back. Right. So why put all that weight on there to do three inches of a rep, you know? And if you're not doing it for, they're not paying you big money to get beat up or beat yourself up, be smart about it. Exactly. You know? How's your diet now? Do you eat good? Yeah, good, good. I don't, I'm, I, you know, I eat, eat healthy and stuff. I don't drink sodas or anything like that. And once in a while, I'll have a little sweets and stuff. And I, I, burn, I do burn that off with the tennis, though, because I don't eat, like, bread and noodles and all that stuff every day. I can feel it. Yeah. And especially with a 17-year-old kid and she's really fast and good yeah, with the tennis. She's good. If I eat or I have it in my stomach, yeah. I can't hit the shots back and I can't keep up. That's funny because in bodybuilding, a lot of guys preach, eat your uh, pasta and eat your rice or your oatmeal for your energy, your, your carbs. I can't. It just fills me up and I feel like sluggish. Right. You know, I do the cottage cheese instead because it's a source of protein uh, and then I don't feel so bad about it. But, you know, as you get older, you keep the meals lighter. But you make sure you have your protein enough. Fresh fruits are good and veggies, and you're good to go. A lot of water. Yeah, you can tell though when you start doing too much of something. <clears throat> yeah. Kind of like the the eating shouldn't make you tired. No. If it's making you tired, you're either doing too much, eating too much, or eating the wrong stuff. Yeah. And the other thing is, someone was telling me today, you're going to work abs. I said, no, my waist is big enough. You know, and there's a truth in that because when you do work your abs, your abs is a muscle. The muscle is going to get grow. I mean, you can sharpen them up by crunches, but you don't want it to grow like your arms do because the minute your abs right. get bigger, your waist gets bigger. You say, oh my god, I feel like I'm getting fat. Right. So you do more abs, it gets even bigger and bigger. So I think Think minimal on the abs just crunches the right. rest is all diet I actually stopped the sit-ups years ago uh, no, a lot I, of yeah I had done it for 10 years and my thought was oh it'll work like a cage and keep the fat in mm -hmm. but then when it gets bigger and bigger mm -hmm. you look heavy and clothes it gets bigger underneath the fat and right skin. exactly so then you can't button your pants and right. you say my god I've been working out and watching them and my pants are getting tighter and tighter and it's your abs getting bigger and then if you're not on some fish or water diet you don't see the squares anyway you just see a belly exactly. and you're like and I used to joke with my wife would be in Hawaii and I'd tell it's muscle under the stomach and I'd see shots of myself and I go god you look like a retired wrestler yeah. with the belly well, even though that, was, that's what I am yeah even <laughs> though it was it was the, the, you know uh, uh, muscle under the stomach it didn't look good it, you're right it, it just makes it look bloated and it's just not good well I, one more thing I know you're an artist and you know that I designed the Gold Gym logo and for you guys out there it's on my website you can order this. It's personally signed to you and autographed by me if you want to buy it and a piece of history and hang it on your wall. If you have to purchase the frame yourself, I'll send it to it like this unless I have a frame. But go to my website, rickdrazen.com. You can find it if you want it. Get it, put it on your wall. It'll be history. Once I'm gone, it'll be even worth more. I think in another 50 years, I probably should live to 120. You'll last so, long. I, I hope so. Well, thank you, Dave, for being here. I really appreciate it. Always. You're right on time, boy. And that's really nice. And thank you guys for watching Rick's Corner. Uh, it was fun having Dave. He's got a lot to talk about. And he's got good advice for you with the heavy train, pinch nerves, and your vertebrae. And just take it easy and train hard. Little by little by little, you grow into what you want to do and what you're doing. Right? 
That's it. Okay. Do it to enhance your life, not to put you in the ground. Exactly. So she'll be visiting me on my display. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code Grayson12 on the link below at OldSchoolLabs.com. Hey everyone, now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson, personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it and I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.